However big or small, our home should be a haven. There's a thousand jobs I need to do around the house. We just don't have the time. But it's not always easy keeping a house in order. It's such a shame we're not using the space. It is absolutely rammed full of stuff. But help is at hand. That's a fantastic piece of furniture. Look at this! A slug! That is solid. You can take back control of your home with clever, common-sense hacks. It's perfect. I love it. That don't bust the bank balance. And the best thing, you still got all of your storage. From this to this. That is just gleaming. That'll do nicely. Oh, my <laughs> God! We'll show you how you can make life-changing improvements in just one day. It's nice and clean for Mummy! Yay! I absolutely love it. I don't think it's ever looked that good before. Oh! <laughs> With better use and a spruce-up of your space. It's wonderful. I love it. You managed to do this in a day. This is absolutely brilliant. Are you getting me all tearing off? Our team of experts is here to help. The old tool belt's coming out. Well, That's how I know you're serious. Master builder Tommy Walsh brings over 50 years of DIY experience. Solid as a rock. Maxine Dwyer runs one of the UK's top extreme cleaning companies. That's what I mean by squeaky clean. And creative carpenter Asher Edwards prides himself on being a perfectionist. I am good. Just a little bit. Cheers. 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 <laughs> so which household has sent a distress call today? Hi, thank you. And I'm Siobhan. And this is... Aoife. And... and this. And this is our house. Family four, the Hare Williams are struggling to balance home life with work life in their four bedroom terraced house in North London. So, this is my bedroom, mine and Hugh's bedroom, uh, but it is now also, like for lots of people, my office. Over half of us want to work from home, but there can be drawbacks. It's definitely not my favourite thing to be working in the corner of my bedroom, particularly because at night you can just see it all there. As you can see, fudged the workspace a little bit, and so I've got uh, some boxes and, oh yeah, the Oxford English Dictionary, holding up my laptop. Across the landing is the family's dumping ground. This is the spare room. As you can see, it's just stuff that we don't know what else to do with, and so it's been put in the corner. This space is definitely not particularly well used, but yeah, it does feel a little bit unthought through downstairs has its own problems. So this is the kitchen. We spend a lot of time in here. We use our kitchens around three hours a day on average. So it's not surprising the family find it difficult to keep theirs clean and tidy. I don't really feel like I ever get to do a deep clean in here. And so there are some corners that don't really get decluttered. Siobhan's love of nature is evident throughout the kitchen. There's lots of stuff on the island counter. Often those are my plants. Cardi. Yeah. If there was something to change, I would probably try to find a way to put more stuff up on shelves. I try to be eco-friendly in how I clean, so I try to not use too many harsh chemicals. We're really keen to have some fresh eyes on some problem areas that we've been looking at for a few years and haven't quite found the right solution for. It's the day of the big clean and fix. What do you hope it might be? A little working space for my mum. What about you, Finn? What do you think might happen? Uh, I sally. I sally. With a team on their way. Love you, sausage. I love you, daddy. Mm. The family head out to give them free reign of their house. To prove you can make a difference in just one day and on a minimal budget. I think it's that one there. Oh, yes. Oh, it's a nice spacious hallway, but there's a lot going on here. Yes. <laughs> As the boys search for the shoes upstairs, Maxine targets the kitchen. 
The kitchen is busy and the cooking area is constantly jumped up with clutter, so really gets a good clean. There's a lot of stuff on the cooking area. I don't expect to see plants here. We need to make this less busy. The toaster, I can see dirt straight away on it. There's crumbs. The kettle, I can descale that. I can't wait to get stuck in. In the bedroom, there's an issue that is familiar to many of us post-pandemic. That must be her workstation, because she works from home. Yeah. It's not ideal working in the bedroom. No, well, the bedrooms be somewhere to rest and relax, mm -hmm. not sort of wake up and see all the work you've done the previous day, right. and an even bigger load of work for the following day. I know. Ideally, you want to separate the two. <laughs> yeah. The solution might be just along the landing. Mm -hmm. It's a nice big room, but there's a lot of clutter. If this is a second bedroom and she's got a working desk in the main bedroom, why don't we rearrange this room and try and fit the... The desk in here. But if we are going to put the desk here, we're going to have to do something with these, with these um, storage units. I think I've got an idea. Hi, Maxine, how's it going? Hi, Tommy, it's not too bad. It's Making bad. the tea? No tea for you, Tommy, I'm sorry. I just need your help. These plants should not be on here. It's a bit busy. I'll leave that to me. I might be able to come up with a solution to get rid of the plants and to make that look a completely different vista. And it will blend in with all their old furniture These that are your they've got. big words. Yeah, my Lovely. big words. Yeah, big vista. That's only five letters. <laughs> With their three problems identified, the team have their missions for the day. The spare room must be transformed into a chic office space so the workstation from Siobhan's bedroom can be moved in. The kitchen needs to be deep cleaned using eco-friendly methods. The plant collection needs creatively clearing from the surfaces. And all areas need a lick of paint and their clutter setting to one side for the family to go through later. All this in just one day and on a limited budget. They'd better get cracking. First, it's all hands on deck to declutter the spare room so Asha has space to work. But I don't understand what you do with the bookshelves. Are they going to stay in here? They're staying in this room, but I'm going to work a little magic. Yeah. I'm going to cut it in half and the top section... Yes. I'm going to drop it into the alcoves. <laughs> Are you with me? Yes, I get The you. bottom section's yeah. going to stay there. Yes. And that's going to support a new worktop. So she's going to have a nice L-shaped desk in this room. Right. Whip it up. Well, you can see the dust. Yeah, this hasn't been moved for a while. And this one particularly heavy. Got it now. Right, so we're going to paint all the walls and then the bed is sitting in this position. Switched around, yeah. And I need to get these shelves outside. Right, why don't I give you a hand to take one down and then Please. you can cut it. Are they heavy? No. Outside, Maxine makes a start, keeping Siobhan's eco-credentials in mind. I try to be eco-friendly in how I clean, so I try to not use too many harsh chemicals. I've got a cup of water. There we go. A cup of white vinegar. And some lemon. I'm going to cut this in half and use the juice of the lemon in my special spray. So this is how I'm going to do it, just like this. I'm using the lemon because it gives it a nice fragrance and it takes away the acidic smell of the vinegar. You still smell the vinegar, but this gives it a, a better smell. There we go. A good old right old squeeze, just like this. The acidity within the lemon breaks down alkaline stains and even has antibacterial properties. We've got to get all the pips out with my fork. 
because if it goes in the spray bottle, it's not going to spray at all. There you go. <gasps> Lovely. Mmm, lemony. It smells all right. Then there's my homemade eco-friendly solution. Give it a shake. There you go. I'm going to attack the kitchen with it. So this is really dusty, but underneath the dust is grease. It's important to clean under the hob plate, as congealed food and grease can block the gas outlets. I have to get rid of the grease somehow, but I also have to be careful of this, the copper surface. So I'm going to try my special solution now, and I know it's going to work. It's not too dirty, but the corners and edges are greasy, and this, with a cotton bud, should work. And I'm going to... Look at this! I told you! A good rule of thumb is to clean the hob every three to four uses, so bacteria doesn't have a chance to spread. These are a little bit dirty, so I'm going to put them in hot soapy water and before you put them back on, make sure they're dry. You've got to do this once every two weeks at least, but on the surface, on the whole, if you spill anything on it, give it a wipe and it will preserve your hob. Tommy's been tasked with keeping the kitchen surfaces clear so they're easy to keep clean. There's lots of stuff on the island counter. Often those are my plants. Tidy. Uh, he may have struck gold. Now these are interesting, these wine boxes. Well, this, I thought, would be a good opportunity to do some upcycling. They've opened up a little bit on the joints, but to re-establish that as a fixture and then fix to the wall, this could be a way of displaying her trailing plants and making that wall look very attractive. Yeah. A little bit of TLC on them first, some glue, maybe punch the pins in and a, the odd screw here and there, and this could turn out to be something quite interesting and unusual. So this is Italian, this is French, multinational. Around a third of us value our kitchen more than any other room, and Siobhan's Island is getting the treatment it deserves. I love this copper worktop. Some people like to polish it up and make it look really sparkly and gleaming. Other people like it to look really rustic and nice, and Siobhan likes it rustic. So what I'm doing is just washing it with soap and water. That's all I'm doing. If you do want a polished finish, you can clean it with lemon juice mixed with salt. The soapy water is just taking the surface grease off. That's all it's doing. It's lovely. And that's how Siobhan likes it. Asher's putting his spare room plan into action. Raising the bookshelves off the floor so Siobhan's desk will fit. Right. I'm going to cut this bookshelf down and repurpose it. So I'm going to cut right in, in the middle of the shelf. I'm going to use this filling knife just to stop me from scratching any other surfaces. Now, this piece that I'm cutting is a solid wood. Not like a MFC or a MDF. The type of wood you choose for your furniture depends on the final look you're after. MDF is best if you want to paint your furniture. MFC is best if you want to pre-finish. It's a bit tricky cutting in this angle, but there you go. Made it through. Look at that, that's beautiful. So the plan is to fit this now. 
on the alcove upside down. Got to think outside the box sometimes. Tommy's also hard at work, upcycling the wine boxes. Well, the problem is these boxes, although they're nice, they're pretty little things, they are very fragile. And I'm aware that we're going to be putting some plant pots in here, so I want to make sure they're going to be nice and solid. So I'm going to adapt it a little bit to make it a little bit stronger and more resilient. By gluing together the racks that the wine bottles used to sit on, Tommy forms a shelf. The next step is to strengthen the box to take the plant's weight. When the pins that hold the thing together are as tiny as that, and because they've been well used, they're a bit wrinkly, a bit like me actually, then it's not always, you have to have patience, that's what you have to have, to make a successful job of it. And you also have to have the right tools for the job. For a builder or a keen DIYer, the most important personal tool of all you can have is a hammer. And this is nicknamed Big Tommy. I've had this for 26 years now. It's a very big claw hammer. And what they would use it for, for four inch wire nails, big long nails, two taps with this, and you've driven the nail home. So it's for speed and efficiency. But when it comes to pins, if you're doing lots of it, what you should really have is a little pin hammer like that. And then that way, when you use it and you tap it in, it won't split the wood and it'll go in and you've got more control over the impact and exactly where the pin is going to go. What you can do is hold in a pair of pliers and with a little toffee hammer like this, gentle one, And hold it up and straighten it a bit. It's not perfect, but it's a semblance of a straight pin. Using the original pins is a great way of keeping it authentic. Oh, the glue will be gone off rock hard in about half an hour. Meanwhile, Asher is preparing his second shelf. So I'm going to cut this one, same technique, same formula. Filling blade just to stop me scratching. And it's important, when you're using a saw blade, you use the full length of the saw. I often see people saw and get stuck just using the middle of the saw blade. You can use the middle just to get the, get the ball rolling but then use the entire length of the saw. And when you use the full length of the saw, it flies through like a breeze. And it's beautiful, man. It's just so beautiful. Whilst his box is dry, Tommy can prep the area where they'll hang. Now it should push. Lovely. Perfect. Have we finished, Tommy? No, we've got more. We've got to get rid of all this stuff. Oh, Tommy, my! Oh no! This is always good to keep. This is the money plant. It's only worth about five. That's it. That's my good deed for the day. Yeah. Yes, it just lift the front. Bend the knees. One, two. A go. bit up to you, is it? Yep. <sighs> Lovely. How's that? Well, we're getting there. Oh, look at this for a problem. <gasps> oh, look. There's a little bit of blown plaster here. Look. Most houses develop cracks in their walls over time. This can be due to changes in the temperature causing the structure to sink or swell. Newly plastered walls can experience hairline cracks as they dry. They can even be caused by heavy road traffic vibrations. What it is, is the skin of the plaster has blown, separated yeah. from the 
the back. Yeah. So you have to cut that back until you get to solid stuff. Yeah. Fill it and then let it dry and sand it and then paint it and no one So it's ever not done. as easy as just getting filler and filling it in. The discoveries continue. Oh, it might be banana or a pear. <sighs> pear. How long has this been collecting dust under here? What's that? Banoffee pie you can make with that, can you? Pear pie. Oh, no, it's pear, isn't it? Yeah, I thought it was a banana. <laughs> When preparing a wall for a fix, it's good to have a clean slate. I'm going to take this off because I want to paint behind it, do a proper job of it. Another good tip is to use a magnetic screwdriver, have one of them in your toolkit, so that you can keep one hand... And there. You see? So that allows you to take it off without losing the screws. With a clean wall, the scale of the job is revealed. What's happened here, this is all plastered, and I think as an afterthought, they decided to put a cable in, chopped a channel out, made it good, and for some reason it hasn't taken. The plaster's blown, so what I'm going to do is scrape it off. Most cracks are fixable, but if they're wider than a 10 pence piece or diagonal, you may need to get your house checked for subsidence. If you just put some filler straight on top of this, the fundamental problem is it's blown below. So you would only be top dressing it and then it'd blow off again. So this way we go back, rough up the, the surface behind the skin of plaster and then put the new filler on it. And that'll give it something to grip. Let it go off, rub it down, paint it, and you'll never know it was there. Tommy's wall is well on its way to a perfect finish. And if you've got a crack like that, a hairline crack, get the edge of the scraper and run it down the crack. And then go over it twice more to make a slight angle, like a V shape on it. But the idea for that is to actually Give it room so that you can actually get some material in there that's going to stick. When filling up cracks and doing repairs, you just have to practice a little bit, learn on the job, so to speak. Hours of hard work earns everyone a brick. Right, gang. Hello, a drink Tommy. on me, that's your one there. Yeah. And there's one for you. Beautiful. Oh, wow. I think you deserve a drink, so I thought, you know, stop for a minute and bring it out. Thanks, Beautiful. Tommy. Beautiful. Well, I'm getting there, stitching all the little bits together and um, I do a lot of filling, uh, painting, and... Yeah, yeah we're going to get there. Thanks. Uh, you're getting on up there, you're being creative, aren't you? Yeah, we're getting there, getting there, making good progress. What about you, Maxine? What are you up to? I've got tons to do. Serious. I'm going to have to ask for your help. I tell you what, if I finish on time, I'll come down and I'll give you a hand. Oh, yes, please, yeah. No promises, though. See you later. Yeah. Don't work too hard. <laughs> we better get going. Let's do this. With the family returning in just a few hours, it's time to pick up the pace. So, to centralise this shelf in the middle of this alcove, a little trick I do, I'll put what needs to be centralised all the way to one side. And now I'll measure the space that's left. So this is 426. Divided by 2 is 213. So I know I need 213 from here to here from here to here. So I'm going to have it roughly around this height, I reckon. I'm going to have a fixing through here, through here, and I'll get a supporting batten just underneath here, just to be safe. When hanging load-bearing shelves, you need to know the material you're fixing into. This Sounds like a plasterboard wall, so you never know what's behind it. It could be brick, could be stud work, 
So I'm going to drill through and if it's just a plasterboard wall, I need to use the right fittings. If there's brick behind it, I can use a wall plug and longer screws. Preparation is key, making sure everything is level and centred before drilling. With his wall filler dry, Tommy's a step closer to finishing his plant display area. This is an orbital sander, and these are Velcro pads. What I'm going to do is <coughs> run this over the filler. It's dried out now in this heat. Get it to be nice and flat, ready for painting. Just got to dust it off. We don't want to clog up the roller with any of the dust. And that should have a nice, smooth finish. Smooth and flat finish, which is what we want. Ash has confirmed it's solid brick behind the Alcos plasterboard. So all the shelves need are raw plugs and long screws. I'm just going to put this screw in just so it pokes through. Beautiful. Look at that, that is solid. And I've only got two screws in at the moment as well. So it goes to show if you're using the right fixings, the right screws, this can hold any weight. And having a bat on to distribute the weight evenly finishes the job. Right. Just need to get, get a screw down to hold that in place now. So how strong are they? Beautiful. And that is on solid as a rock. What's that? You don't believe me? You don't believe me? Right, let's see if you can take my weight. Look at that. Not going nowhere. Maxine cracks on with the kitchen appliance that, on average, Brits leave eight months between cleans. Toasters are one of the most neglected appliances in the kitchen. They gather dust, crumbs and grease. So it's very important to wash them once every two weeks. Look at the bottom here. They gather tons of crumbs. Crumbs, look at this. Even though we shake this off, it still could do with a bit of a soaking because it's got grease in. And while I'm soaking it, I'm going to start washing this. For the body of the toaster, Maxi needs something stronger than soap and water. I'm going to mix up my special concoction. Baking soda, white vinegar, and it has to be in a paste. So I think that's enough. You can feel the grit in it. So now that I've mixed my solution, I'm going to make sure all the crumbs are gone. I'm going to Give it a good old shake and tip it upside down. There we go. We've got a crumb-free toaster. So look at this, you see. This feels gritty and it's also friendly for the environment. It's not harsh stuff. Used in equal amounts, the chemical reaction of the acid in the vinegar and the alkali in the baking soda helps break away dirt. I'm going to rub this into the toaster and leave it for approximately 15 minutes and let it work its magic. Tommy, take a look at my toaster. Can you see the difference between this, well, this and this one? Yeah, that's pristine, this bit now. Yep. I think I should toast you on that. Well done. Ah, oh, very clever, very clever. Yeah, you see, 
You don't need to chop your toaster away. Always make sure your toaster is unplugged for its deep clean. All I have is a, a knife or an implement, a cloth, and I just went like this. Gently go like this. And you will be surprised, I'm telling you. See that brown bit there? You see, it's a bit awkward to get to, but the cloth and the knife should be able to get it off. Look at this. Can you believe it? Asha's cracking away up there, but still got loads to do, and the people are due to come back very soon. It's been a hot day, and we're running out of ammunition, <laughs> especially now as we're coming over the last hill. Uh, right, let's just get stuck in. The principle behind this is they like their plants, and we're trying to bring the outside inside, because you've got this lovely glass, sunny roof. So if we paint this a background of green, this would be a lovely feature wall, and also the plants can shine out against this green backdrop. Tommy's using a plastic bag hack, wrapping the paint tray in a bag before pouring in paint to speed up cleaning the tray once he's finished. Now, there's no strict rules where you start and where you finish because you can, you can roll out the majority and do the cutting in with a brush after, which is what I've elected to do. But you can do it either way. But remember to try and get the, the roller strokes or the brush strokes all in the same direction. We've used masking tape on this for speed, but professionals would never mask up this. They'd just cut it in That's to show their prowess. Outside, Ash has moved on to the next stage of his plan to improve Siobhan's working life. So this is my bedroom, mine and Hugh's bedroom, uh, but it is now also, like for lots of people, my office. It's definitely not my favourite thing to be working in the corner of my bedroom, particularly because at night you can just see it all there. Moving the bookshelves off the floor earlier has freed up space for a new L-shaped extension to Siobhan's existing desk using MDF. This is going to be for the worktop. Because it's such a wide span, it's best to double up the MDF to stop it from sagging. So I'm going to use up all the clamps I've got around the edge and then bring out some other heavy equipment to weigh down the middle. I've got timber underneath to stop it from sagging whilst the glue dries. OK, just as an extra precaution, I'm screwing in some extra screws just to pinch these two together. The glue definitely does the job, but the screws lock it in place just in case. In the half hour it takes the glue to dry, Asha spruces up the spare room with white paint to make it feel larger. Here we go. This kettle is filthy. Inside the final appliance on Maxine's hit list lurks a common problem, limescale. As well as flaking off in your tea, limescale in your kettle reduces its efficiency, making each cup more expensive. This kettle surely hasn't been washed since I brought it. People don't realise that kettles need washing because they attract grease, just like every other appliance in the kitchen. And how wonderful is it to get a cup of tea with a nice, clean kettle? It's absolutely glorious. It's not just the outside of the kettle that's getting the Maxine treatment today. So I've got... A cup of white vinegar. It's gone there. And a cup of water. I'm going to boil it and leave it to set for 15 minutes. And that's how you get rid of lime scale. 
The glue on the desk extension is dried, ready to be cut to size. Though you could saw this by hand, to save time, Asher has a circular saw and guide rail. And nothing goes to waste. The desk offcuts are going to become an extra set of office shelves. All that's needed to match the new extension to Siobhan's existing desk is a lick of paint, creating a seamless L shape. Back in the kitchen. Lime scale. See that? All from the kettle. Have a look at this. Brilliant. Job well done, if I may say so myself. It's amazing and it never fails me. Boiling vinegar and boiling water left to rest and it does its work. Tommy's work is coming together too. So ideally, you don't DIY and clean in the same space at the same time. This, unfortunately, is very dusty, thanks to Tommy. I'm taking the dust off these plants and all I'm using is cloth and water. Some people say put them in the shower, but I do it this way. Tender loving Kia. Look at this. It looks nice enough to eat. It looks like cabbage. With the family home shortly, Asher's nearing the finish line on Siobhan's L-shaped desk. In a Rooney. Right there. A self-leveling laser makes sure everything's straight. Siobhan's workstation is ready. Time for the final push. Whoa, 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 whoa. No more cobwebs. How are you doing, son? Wonderful. Oh, this looks great. Oh, they're really good, them storage units. The repainting of the room, it just looks fantastic. Fresh, white. Are you pleased with the way it's come out? Oh, of course. Oh, the old yeah. genius <laughs> it out. Well, you made a fantastic job of it. I'll let you finish it off and right. uh, I'll go downstairs. All right. Sure. Cool. All right, son. I'll see you later. Maxine. Oh, they're for me. Look at the... They're for the table. Tommy, it's amazing. You like it? Yeah. It, look at the green wall. Yeah, because it picks up a nice contrast with the pine. Yeah. And it's a soft green, so it sort of drags your eye over to look at all the artwork. And, the, and she wants the plants to grow, so they hang down. So this should tick all the boxes, I hope. Mwah. Brilliant. When I heard that the crates were going on the wall, I could not visualise it. I thought it was big and ugly yeah. and awful. But it looks amazing. I'm going to put the flowers down now. Right here. That's it. Put them right bang in the middle of the table. There you go. Perfect. And they're done. So, with a minimal budget and just one day, what have the team managed to pull off? Upstairs, the spare room was crying out for some reorganisation, a declutter and a workstation needed fitting. But not any longer. The cooking appliances were in need of a deep clean using the family's preferred eco-friendly methods. Kitchen surfaces had to be creatively cleared of plants for easy maintenance. The boys depart, leaving Maxine behind to greet the family. Well, that was a tough one. <laughs> Emotional. Well, we got it done. Hey guys, come this way. At 
the start of the day, the kitchen needed a deep clean and the plants moved elsewhere to keep the surfaces clear. Oh! Oh! oh. Look at that! <laughs> oh, wow! Oh, thank you! Wine boxes, <laughs> how nice! So, Tommy created a feature wall to display Siobhan's plants and fix the cracks. Look at the colour. It's lovely. It's like a... Avocado, I don't know. Kind of. Avocado kitchen. Cracks can you see the, the cracks? I can't see them I can't anymore. see the cracks. No, the cracks have gone. Very Tommy! Exciting. Tommy just <laughs> totally got rid of them. Yeah? But I worked hard on this side. Oh, oh, there's more. Guys, look behind you. Oh, look at all the shiny. It's very shiny. This is, this is nice, isn't it? I use nothing abrasive. Oh. Because you're eco-friendly. Well, we try. So I yeah. don't use any harsh chemicals at all. Mm. So that's how we sparkle oh, up all your appliances. Yeah. That's amazing. Look at the hob. Sparkly. It's so shiny. Look at the hob. <laughs> I know, we'll never cook on it again. We also worked in the spare room. Fantastic. Brilliant. Yes. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Previously, Siobhan had been confined to working in a corner of her bedroom. But all that's changed. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> now, her workspace has been moved into this forgotten spare room to create a chic home office with a double bed for guests. There's a large L-shaped desk and the bookshelves have been cut in half to make use of the dead space. Where's the other half? Where is the other half? Oh! Oh! Yes! Oh, how clever! Go. Wow! Yes! Look! It feels really different. Your office desk is My now in the spare desk. room. It's incredible. I mean, it really... It doesn't feel like the same room. And I can't believe you've done it in 12 hours. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Those shelves are brilliant. They're really good, yeah. Oh, that's Ashra. I feel like we've been gifted just an extra room in our house. It's incredible. How much of a change is this going to make for you? I mean, this, yeah, this will make a big change, actually. Yeah. It would be so nice not to be working in my own bedroom. Well, on that note, I've got to go. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Enjoy your spaces. And not only have the team left them with a spruced up home, the family have also had a leg up to leading a cleaner and tidier life. There we go. I'm so glad they're happy. My work is done now. And it's made an immediate difference. How do you like your new desk, Mummy? Oh, I really like it. It's really nice not having to work in the bedroom anymore. And do you like our new kitchen? Yeah. Do you like all the plants? Yeah.